Akira Emoto is a slicer running inside of the browser. It's loaded from some server to your browser. Then even if you will disconnect from internet or if you will disconnect from the server from each, which it was loaded, it will work. Kirimoto was written by Stuart Allen. It's a great guy from uh, Weston, Virginia, here in the States. Alan promised to be here on the weekend, so maybe he will show later on and we can really see him. How to load Kirimoto? You have two options. The most common option for you will be just go to this link to grid space Kiri and just search for Kirimoto. However, if you want to be super secure, you can install Kirimoto to your local computer as a server or to your local network and run it as your own web service. Once you will load uh, Kirimoto, it will look like that. And what is extremely important is to remember that this default screen with all default parameters can be invoked anytime by pressing Shift Z, then confirm clearing, and then refresh browser. To know how to clear it and get it to the default stage is actually pretty important. We will go right away to light the demo. And uh, now you should see Kirimoto as it was loaded from the server. And it's simple build plate with a lot of parameters. And let's always start with importing the, the model. So we are going and we will import Pikachu model. And notice that this model is pretty big. It's 26 megabytes. So it's not a small model. Yeah. Let's open it and whoo, you see how fast it was loading. Uh, because it was coming from my local disk. Once I have loaded the 3D model, first I will click to slicing. It will slice it and the all parameters on the left side are taken in consideration. Second step after slicing is that you will preview it. And preview is pretty important because it's emulating the 3D printing. So I press preview. And uh, it's, it's a big model, you know, it's really big model. This model will print for seven hours in, on the fast machine. And um, I'm just trying to show you that it's quite good and robust machine. And notice that here at the bottom is slider and you can go layer by layer to see how it works. What is actually pretty important because that is how you and your students will find if the model is printable, you are not printing something to the air. And now the last step is to get a G code that is based on this to, to the file that you will use. And it is here, export, exporting. And notice that time estimated for this print is 18 hours, 45 minutes. <laughs> Question that you should have is, okay, but G code depends on the printer. Every printer has different parameters, different speed and so on. And it has to be really some lousy printer that is printing this model for 18 hours. And you are perfectly right because if you are going to use it for the real printer, you have to change from generic device that is here in the right top corner to your printer. So when I will click to generic device from any generic Marlin, I will select, for example, Jellybox version four with nozzle 0 0.6 millimeter. Okay, here we are. With selecting device, it automatically selected the default material. Default material here is PLA. And we have pre-programmed PEGI PLA TPU. Okay, let's press the size again. So you'll see the slicing goes already, slicing goes faster. 
and let's download it and we are now on uh, six six hours why because it's completely different printer different speed different everything once you have this g code generated all what you are going to do is download it and when you will download you can download it as the as a, as a 3d model as, sorry as a g code or uh, to your file or directly to the sd card and then print it in uh, any way yeah so i'll save pikachu free here save here we are done in the browsers it's always challenging how many parameters these browsers are having uh, and we are using all browsers that exist cura prusa simplify free the number of parameters goes now in this moment anything between 500 and 1000 <laughs> and to make, make it right even if you will make selections is pretty complicated but the most important thing is understand the principles the strategy of the slicing and, the, and, and when we are looking to the slicer from the strategy point of view all slicers are the same they have some layer height they have some definition of the shell they have definition of what kind of infill will be used heating of the nozzle and bed during the printing the same is with the cooling and finally how to behave on the first layer because it is the most important we have a nice stuff here we have a support and support by the way can be manually adjusted so you can let it generate automatically and just remove and put some pylons and you have general parameters for the printing as you can see jellybox standard print speed is 16 millimeters per second so it's faster than d4 that is usually 40 or 35 finally some parameters for the expert as they are saying yeah you don't need to know nothing like that because it's all in the profile i don't like that my pikachu is so big i'm not going to print some big and launch pikachu so let's make it smaller so you'll select pikachu and go to resize and let's say to do it 0.5 on original scale well this is half size pikachu second i say okay the because I'm using nozzle 0 0.6 millimeter, I can actually have layer 0 0.4 millimeter. I don't have to have 0 0.3. And less layers will be faster print. Finally, I don't need 10% infill because 10% is just so much for stuff like that. It can be, let's say, 5%. So now I changed the default profile and probably I will use it let's go and say so layer will be 0 0.4 yeah temperature because it will be fast print will be 225 let's say or no to keep to 20 and um, infill infill five percent i have now a new profile when you will click on the profile there is one profile more if i'm going to tune this profile because i don't know if this is the perfect slicing or not is for me a good idea to save this profile like here simply to save it to my hard drive so because remember if i will refresh everything it will go to default all these profiles they are prepared will actually disappear but now with a new profile and a smaller pikachu let's go and slice again and let's see how long it will take and it will take 50 minutes original generic printer was 18 hours then we got with the normal settings to six hours and then we downscale it and use big nozzle and you know and make less inf that's i'm what, what is what i'm talking about strategy of slicing by the strategy of slicing you can significantly change print time what is pretty important for the cool because there is simply no time it's tuned it works and i don't want to play with that next time so let's save it everything let's save model and let's save the profile 
and uh, printer that it will be used for. So I will go to workspace keycard show free zero zero free. Okay, we have it saved and to show you that it's really happening, what I will do or what we can do, we already know, we should now clean everything. We will clean cache, clean browser, clean everything like load a new Kirimoto. Why? Because if I will close Kirimoto now and I will open again Kirimoto, well, it remembers my old job. <laughs> and that's right now I don't, don't want. So I will press Shift Z, clear preferences, yes, and press refresh in the left top corner browser, and we are back in the default stage of Kirimoto. And when we are in default stage, let's now import, but we will not import the, the, the single model. We will just import this KMZ small Pikachu workspace 003. This is the one that we are right now prepared. And now we are importing workspace and profiles and everything. So generic printer, once we will confirm that, notice that it, in, in right top corner is still any generic Marlin because, you know, we reset everything. But now we will say, okay, import it. And here we are. It's Jellybox 4, the new profile that we made and the small Pikachu that we prepared. So let me show you some, some, some cool stuff. What I like, for example, is this. Sometimes the printing directions uh, need to be changed because it will simply not work. In this case, it is working. But what about if I will decide that I will print it from the tail, from here? So there's a feature that is called uh, choose a face to place on the work surface. Click and I will select, okay, this will be my face. Here we are. And now we are going to print Pikachu in this direction. Well, it's a little bit nonsense to be honest, but it can help us because if we will decide to print this direction, we definitely need a support. So let's do it automatically. I detect it. Okay, here we are. So you see now it recommended this kind of support as a general. And I can make decisions. For example, I can say, hey, this here I actually don't want to print because, uh, because my printer is good enough that it will make it. So I will just go and I will delete it with the mouse or I will add additional ones yeah and then we can emulate how it will go including support and here we are support parameters have all important what is used for the support in any browser is the angle of support how density of the pylons how far how big is offset how big gap is between the support and so on simply you really can use Kirimoto on, uh, in education for teaching the strategy of slicing and students because it can run in browser, Chrome, anything, they can just do it. Yeah. This is the summary. It's free, runs in the browser, compatible, simple, can be used locally and supports the whole digital manufacturing. That's it today. I really want to keep format that it will fit to 15 minutes. If you have uh, any questions and you are still here, hey, Stuart, nice to see you. How's it going? Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, Maria, nice to see you. So uh, if anybody remains and has any question, we have this privilege to hear here also the Stuart, the one that started it in 2013, as I found in his LinkedIn. Hello. Yeah. So once I have uh, everything sliced and I can download the G code, if I don't want to uh, uh, put the G code onto the SD card and run it that way, uh, do you have another option where uh, um, if I have the, the 3D printer plugged in directly to my 
desktop that I can send the G code that way? Sure. So this is a, a little more complicated issue because running inside the browser constrains what you can do on the local network. It's sandboxed. So there are a couple of options. If you're running an Octoprint server, then uh, it is possible to post data to an Octoprint server. Uh, I, have a, I have a plugin for that. So you plug it into your Octoprint uh, as a module, and then it'll spool it uh, basically through the cloud because you can't, the browser is not allowed to talk to things on your local network. Um, you're loaded in a secure context. You can't talk to HTTPS, can't talk to HTTP. Uh, so that's just an unfortunate thing. Um, in the future, because I'm doing desktop builds right now, the desktop electron builds don't have that constraint. Um, and so in the future, I'll be plugging in features so that when you run the desktop builds, you can talk to devices directly. So like if you have a bamboo okay. printer, you have anything that's Octoprint or even the Jellybox, I'm sure there's going to be an interface where we can spool directly to those. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah.